Hey man, hand me a multi tool. Here you go. No, not that one, man. I'll, I'll get one. What, what's wrong with this one? Because they make my hands look small. I already have enough problems finding gloves that fit. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today, since I went so long last week, instead of doing questions over coffee, I'm actually going to focus more on gear stuff today. Um, we'll throw some questions at you next week. So, first off, I wanted to go over kind of everything we're going to talk about today. I have got a new book called Warning Order from Joshua Hood. I have got some compact bolt cutters that we'll discuss. I've got some mods that I did on a couple of 4.7s prion lights and I've got some mini multi-tools. So because some of these items are a little smaller what I'm going to do is talk about some of the larger stuff first and then we'll go to a tabletop and I'll talk about the smaller stuff. So first off let's talk about warning order from Joshua Hood. This is an advanced copy I just got in. Um, so I'm on the list for some advanced copies of books sometimes and typically they come in and I thought gear tasting would be a good way to kind of highlight those. Um, I got, I'm about halfway through Josh Hood's first book, Clear by Fire. I am in, very much enjoying it. So this is the second book in the series. This is his Search and Destroy Thriller series. Um, so this one is called Warning Order. And let's see if I can remember what this is about here. In the second book of the Explosive Search and Destroy Thriller series, Mason Kane, a special ops hero, with a questionable past, joins forces with the CIA to neutralize a radical offshoot of ISIS and unravel a conspiracy emanating from the White House's inner sanctum. Okay, so I didn't remember that, but anyway, that's what this is about. I'm really looking forward to it. So again, advanced copy. It's not even on the shelves yet, so I will let you know how it goes. So next up, we got some bolt cutters. I was looking for some bolt cutters online to get for the shop, and I came across a pretty cool little thing here. These are compact bolt cutters. So you can fold them up, and lock them in just like that, which I think was a cool design. Um, I've, I kind of thought these would be cool to show just from kind of a breacher slash uh, surreptitious entry type perspective. So, you know, if you needed to um, carry a compact set of bolt cutters, these would actually fit in a backpack really well. Um, I did notice when I got picked these up that there's a little hole here in the handle. So what I did is I didn't like the way these were so janky and kind of flopping around. So I put some shock cord and tied a overhand knot in each side and just used shock cord to wrap around the handle and now they're secured and they aren't going anywhere. They don't jing jingle jangle anymore. So I thought they were cool. Again, this is overall size is probably less than 12 inches here. Um, they say 14 inch bolt cutters, so I'm not sure if that does refer to um, that size here. Maybe it is 14 inches from end to end. Um, it's it definitely isn't the jaw. The jaw is not 14 inches. Um, but at any rate, we did. I did test these out with a um, couple of padlocks, and it cut padlocks just fine, which is very interesting to me. So anyway, if you're looking for something that can cut padlocks and folds up nice and compact, check these out. So anyway, pick these up on Amazon. I'll throw the link in the description so you can get right to them if you want to pick up a pair. Um, I think they were relatively inexpensive, probably... 30 bucks or so. I think they were under 30 bucks. Um, they are made overseas, but the label is a little deceiving. It's got a big American flag right there and says, designed, engineered, and quality assured in the U.S., but manufactured in China. So that it is what it is. All right. So the other thing I'd like to talk about is those smaller items. We'll talk about the prion flashlights and the little mini multi-tools, but let's get to a tabletop view. All right. So the origin of my search for little mini multi-tools came about from this MPC that I have. So this is a uh, survival kit tin that we sell on ITS in our store. But what I have in here, get rid of this lid real quick. So what I have is I kind of supplemented um, our traditional survival kit, our mini survival kit, uh, with a couple of things. One of one of which is this little mini multi tool that I picked up probably. 10 years ago at Walmart. It's a little cheapo multi-tool. Um, it's honestly just a piece. <laughs> I, I don't really like it. I guess, yes, it could do its job if it needed to, but I've never really liked it because um, I've tried to use it before when it comes to the, you know, the pliers and stuff like that. And already when you put a little pressure on it, 
it starts to bend these pieces and then it can be a pain to actually put back together again. So anyway, very cheap. Like I said, it was probably five or six bucks, um, maybe 10 at Walmart. It's been so long. It's made by Berkeley, but at any rate, I know it's made overseas uh, just because I can tell by the quality and I pretty much remember it being made in China. But at any rate, I wanted to get a replacement for it. So I started looking around at different size uh, multi-tools that were out there. So I came across the Leatherman Squirt PS4 and the Gerber Dime. So I wanted to just kind of walk you through my initial impressions of these uh, as suitable replacements for the one that is in our survival kit. So again, these are supplementary items that I have in here, but we do sell a survival kit called the MSK, and that's kind of where the basis from all this stuff came from. You know, and um, the survival kits that we make at ITS came about from uh, really trial and error. It took us about two years to actually develop and that's developed the MSK and that's based on just my pr my repeated use of a survival kit and actually using the items inside of there and not just saying hey here's our survival kit. Um, we really did research everything that went into there and we're now carrying like the the add-on supplements like these photon lights um, and other things like that as well as the uh, Vargo titanium whistles which I have buried in here somewhere. Um, Anyway, I won't bore you with too many more details, but at any rate, I've been we've been supplementing the you know our our kits with those items too. So anyway, one of the things I'm researching right now are these mini multi tools. So the Leatherman Squirt, yeah, I'll open this up for you here, and the Gerber Dime, um, I feel are both pretty suitable replacements just considering their overall size, and that's what I was looking for is something relatively similar in size to the multi-tool I was already using. So right off the bat, I started noticing some things, you know, about each one of these. Um, one being the Leatherman Squirt felt better in my hand. This Gerber Dime does have a wider grip, um, but I just felt that this, this is actually more comfortable in my hand on the Leatherman Squirt. So that was just an initial impression off, right off the bat. They both have kind of a spring-loaded jaw, um, whereas this, old, this other one doesn't. So that was always an issue for me too. I'd have to kind of manually open that jaw uh, to use the pliers. So well, on these, they both fold up really nicely. They both kind of spring-load. Um, you can see that kind of snap shut. Um, the Gerber doesn't necessarily spring-load, but that's not really a huge issue. It's just a, it is what it is kind of thing. Um, they both have a little keychain attachment. I never wound up using that and I even took it off of this one. So, um, but it's good lashing point if you were ever gonna use it. The exterior of these are a little different. That's kind of where I'd like to start um, now that we've kind of walked through the, the pliers. The Gerber Dime has a built-in um, bottle opener all the time. So that's not actually something that can close. So something that's always kind of sticking out there. I don't particularly like that. I like the fact that it's got a bottle opener, but um, I really wish that that could fold in somehow or um, really wasn't there. So again, let me look through the exterior. So the exterior on this, I got scissors, got a flathead screwdriver. This looks like a, looks like that's about it. I couldn't tell whether that was actually a, uh, what do you call that? Let's look in the letter instructions. Metal file, yes. Couldn't tell if that was a file. Kind of looks like the serrations on a file, but not quite. Um, looks like another screwdriver there, another flathead. So it looks like small flathead, large flathead. Other side has, um, I'm not really sure what to call that. Hang on a second. Make sure I got everything out. Yep, all right. So on this, there's a knife blade here. And then I'm not quite sure what this is. It didn't come with detailed instructions on what each of the tools were like the Leatherman did. Um, but I do know that that knife edge is fairly sharp and this kind of looks like almost like a modified seatbelt cutter kind of thing. It's got a blade edge right here, but I couldn't tell you what that is. Then it's got scissors on this side and those are spring loaded, which is nice. Um, let's just leave these out and I'll compare them to the squirt. So there's the accessories there, and then squirt. There's the scissors here on the opposite side. Looks like a little small screwdriver. Looks like a larger flathead, and there's a bottle opener there. On the other side is a file, 
And that's a that's a straight up file. So one side is rough, one side is a little not as rough. And then there's a larger size blade. And I do like the blade better on the Leatherman um, than the Gerber. I just think it's a it'd probably be easier to sharpen if it ever got dull. Um, whereas this is looks more like a razor blade type edge. Might be a little harder to sharpen. So I guess comparing scissors, they're both spring loaded, so I couldn't really tell you what. Those are pretty sharp. And just cut myself with open blade. <laughs> those are pretty sharp as well. So no real uh, difference in my opinion. I do like the, I think the, yeah, those are a little more springy. Um, they do seem to cut a little better, but anyway, like I said, I'm just kind of roughly comparing and contrasting these um, right off the bat. They both seem to have kind of the, a similar setup. Um, I do keep coming back to the Leatherman though, um, one being that it's made in the U.S., which I do like a lot. Um, but I do still like this Gerber too. I like the size. I'm just not a big fan of this, uh, the bottle opener that's sticking out here. So um, at any rate, uh, that's the little comparison there between the Squirt from Leatherman, the PS4, and the Gerber Dime, and what I was using. So, looking to upgrade my survival kit, probably with the Gerber Squirt. Okay, so let's talk about the 4.7's Prions. So, this is the Prion 1 and this is the Prion 2. I've been carrying this for quite a while, but I recently had them modified. Um, one of the modifications I just added on myself, which are these tail caps, or I'm sorry, uh, pocket clips. These are from Prometheus Lights and they're made for the Prion lights. And these are made out of titanium. I really like them. They replace the smaller, uh, thinner metal, um, non-titanium uh, pocket clips that were on here. Uh, I've always had issues with these. They've bent before. I could never get them kind of positioned right. I'm looking forward to running these. These have only been on for a couple of days now. I just recently received them. Uh, but I also sent these lights away to a company called Zodiac Engineering who made a couple of modifications on these for me. One is the crenellated bezel on these. So that's the first modification you can see. Um, and that's, yes, that's a little aesthetic, but I had them in there anyway. I wanted to get this done. Um, just as an impact device, I think that the crenellated bezel would be a little bit better than just jamming the, the regular bezel into somebody if I had to. Um, and then the other modification is some crenellations cut on the, the tail cap, or actually it's really, really the outer ring. So if you take this outer ring off on these, you can really see the modification a little better. So what 4.7s, when they made these prions, what they did is they put this little metal cap inside here. So this actually went over the rubber gasket that's over the tail cap, the push button switch. So you were using it like this and what would happen is that they would, this would always depress in my pocket and I would wind up, you know, basically discharging the light in my pocket and wearing out the battery. So I never liked this and you could always take this part off of it and put back on the ring. But the problem with the way the ring was when you put it back on is it was very hard to actually reach and depress that rubber gasket to depress the tail cap or the push button. So the other Zodiac engineering modification is to they cut a, a, a bevel basically in the tail cap and then hollowed out grooves on three sides of that kind of a crenellation. And you put this back on, obviously you remove this metal cap and it's going to be challenging sometimes to screw on there. Screw that on there. And now you've got an easy way to get to the light. So, I really like the, the push button on these. The other benefit is that with the, without this protruding from the back, you can now tail stand these. And that's great because the functions of this light are a couple. So you have low LED, medium LED, and then a high powered LED. And then after that function, it goes through that cycle one more time, low, medium, high. Then it, if I don't turn it off, low, medium, high, low, medium, high. Then it goes to a strobe goes to an SOS, and then it goes to a beacon high, and then a beacon low. 
So those are the functions of the light. And I really like that there's so many functions within this little light. Um, I really love the Prion 1 because I can carry it in my pocket all the time. I've also pocket carried a Prion 2 as well, and they're both great lights. Um, one of the other benefits, obviously, is the longer runtime with the two LED cells. And I always keep, I always keep lithium batteries in these, but the clicky tail cap did not come on the Prion 1 originally. It was only on the Prion 2. So I ordered an extra tail cap back when they sold them individually and just added one on here. So when I sent these in for modification, I also, I just sent both of these in and they both had clicky tail caps that could be modified. So again, Zodiac Engineering is who did the modifications. Uh, Four Sevens, who actually manufactures the lights, actually just changed the Prion design. So these are not available anymore unless you get them on the secondary market. I've just had these a long time. I really wish they wouldn't have changed the design. I'm looking forward to checking out the new one. Um, I'm just not a big fan so far of what I've seen, but that doesn't mean they're not better lights. Um, I just love my old ones that I've had for a long time. And Zodiac Engineering also refinished them on the outside for me too. So they look a little cleaner. They're not beat up anymore um, because I've, I've used and abused these. So at any rate, pre-on modifications from Zodiac Engineering, pocket clips from Prometheus Lights. All in all, um, the lights originally were probably, I want to say 30 to 40 bucks for the small one and maybe 50 to 60 for the larger Prion 2. And the modifications I just did, I just put another $100 into these lights. So yes, it's a little pricey, but at the same time, uh, the functionality is, makes it worth it for me. So it is what it is. <laughs> Prion lights. Thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember, if you have any questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any of the social media networks, and we will find your questions and get them on the air. If you're enjoying Gear Tasting and you'd like to support, please consider joining our crew leader membership and let us give you something in return. Thanks for watching.